guys. I'm Jen Burson. I am the founder of Generation PR. Today we are going to run through my favorite topic is like productivity, optimizing your day, optimizing your happiness, opti optimizing um, your work output so you can get into a flow state. Very important to me. Um, so it's always been on my mind, you know, how do I optimize my productivity and make the time that I have really count. Um, but we know that there are kind of productivity traps that you may or may not be aware of. Um, and so we're going to talk today about some things you may be doing without even knowing it that could be sabotaging your um, productivity. Um, you're looking to execute your vision for your business, but maybe you're caught up in those little mundane like little tiny, you know, kind of whack-a-mole type um, activities in your business where you're just pulled in a million direc directions, little tasks, and you are not having the time you need to work on your big picture initiatives. So that's what is important to me is giving you that time back so that you can refocus your energy on what truly matters in your business and we're going to talk about the four huge productivity traps to watch out for and obviously shift you with four ways to get back on track. And when your focus is on being productive, sometimes you fall into productivity traps. So instead of spending your time wisely, you're wasting energy trying to just cram more in and get more done each day. But here is maybe the harsh truth. If you... Um, are not pro if you're just prioritizing productivity, that is not always going to set up your agency for success, especially if you are not doing the things on your list that are moving your business forward. You're not doing it correctly, you know. So some things are going to get you in a trap. Sometimes what seems to be productive on paper is actually getting in your way and preventing you from working on what matters. Um, a productivity trap will kind of keep you running in circles, chasing that next check on your to-do list just so you can tick it off instead of letting you focus your attention on the big picture for your agency. So you cannot execute your vision for your agency and push yourself closer to big picture goals, things that are really important to you, like maybe your big why, like your purpose your purpose statement. It's like a big why, like a North Star. When things get hard um, or, you know, things are, you're hitting road bumps in your business, that productivity or pardon me, the um, purpose statement will guide you in the right direction. So the four business productivity traps that I want you to be aware of so that you can avoid doing these in your agency. The first one is multitasking or constantly context shifting. This is when you are jumping between a bunch of different tasks and you feel like you're getting a lot done. You feel super productive. Um, you've got something you're working on that's kind of uh, a little bit more focused. And in the meantime, you're answering emails and you're reading an article or pulling things from an article or going through email and opening up links you want to read later. And you're kind of jumping back and forth. You know, maybe you answer a few emails then you jump on a call with a client. Some of these are a little sneaky because you feel like you're really working on one thing at a time. But when you go from emails to client calls and then pitch writing for a different client and then back to answering emails, that is tiring for your brain. That is tiring for your deep focus that you need to have your best work, your most fulfilling and creative work. And what also happens is that each time you jump to a new task or you shift from one client to the next, your brain has to stop and reset and refocus on what you're doing right now. And you may think that you're getting a lot done, but what you're actually doing is losing this really valuable time and energy every time you switch tasks. Maybe we call this multitasking. It's really context shifting that the problem that is where the problem lies. Every productivity expert will tell you that you lose major time refocusing and shifting from one thing to the next when you context shift. 
you're losing valuable time and focus and productivity, okay? Maybe you've heard that before. You've probably heard multitasking is not as productive as you think. And the reason why is because your context shifting and your brain is having to readjust every time you do that. But what I want you to do instead is try time blocking. So you're going to time block throughout your day so that you complete similar tasks one after the other before moving on to something new. Or if something is a bigger task and it needs full focus, it is like your most creative type of activity. Could be strategy writing, proposal writing, writing pitches, um, developing social media content. You've got to focus on that so you can get into that creative space so that you can be really focused on that deep work and tapping into your most creative and clever strategic mindset. So you're going to block time so that you can dedicate um, these chunks of time, break your day into chunks. And research shows that 25 minutes is pretty much a sweet spot um, of extended focus. We know people's focus is shrinking more and more every, you know, day as we get into the TikTok era of like very short attention span hunks of content. But when you really need to focus, you give yourself 25 minutes, you can kind of work your way up 50 is the max. And then what you're going to do is, um, you know, take a break at that time, refocus your eyes. I look out the window, I go on my balcony, I get fresh air. And so give yourself in between those time blocks, a little bit of time, even if you're working on something that's like two or three blocks, because it's longer, deeper work, you still need to take those breaks. But if you commit to 25 minute chunks or all the way up to 50 minute chunks in a row consecutively, you will get that thing done faster than if you dragged it out in between answering emails and more focused and creative than if you were switching back and forth. Okay, it makes a lot of sense. When your brain is allowed to concentrate on one thing at a time, you think more clearly, you will be more effective, more accurate, and work quicker than if you were multitasking. You make mistakes when you're multitasking. If you wanna be more effective, accurate, and work quicker, block time and don't context shift or what some people call multitask, okay? That's number one. Okay, number two, this is, if you're in charge of your calendar, you've gotta be aware of this, Sometimes you will be giving yourself too much time for meetings or for calls. So what happens is a lot of people will set their meetings for 30 minutes or an hour, regardless of how long the conversation will probably last. You know, you'll block that hour, but why would you set aside an hour for something that only takes 20 minutes or should only take 20 minutes? So Scheduling time to connect with your clients or your team about new projects will feel productive, but sometimes you'll leave yourself with that dead space throughout your day. You know, you'll finish a meeting um, and it feels awesome, but you're left with this random like 10 or 15 minutes that you didn't plan for. And so it's easy to turn that time into a break, which is fine. Maybe that's when you need one or um, it's probably better to plan ahead. The other thing is when you allow an hour for a call, it's going to run over what is actually necessary. When you block it down to like 15, 20 minutes, you'll get the job done in that amount of time. It's like your um, the conversation, your efforts, your discussion will grow beyond what it actually needs because you're like, we have all this time for this call. Um, so don't let meetings take up too much of your time. I try to meet with clients as infrequently as possible. Once or twice a month at the very most, that's been a sweet spot for my agency. But any more than that, and you're on the call and you're like, so, well, we discussed this last week and we're still working on that. And it's not enough time to get that momentum and that string of effort going to be able to re report back some, you know, some, some changes and some momentum. Um, but even when you do meet with your clients, maybe schedule the call only for that necessary amount. So if you're in charge of scheduling, 
put it in for the amount of time that you want the call to take. You know, conversations will naturally drag on when you know you have a ton of time to fill. If you give yourself literally 15 minutes instead of 30 or 20 minutes instead of an hour, everyone stays focused um, so that they can work through the conversation, find solutions, plan ne next steps. You can be in charge of that when you're scheduling. Do not give more time than is needed. You can free up over an hour every day by doing this. You know, make sure you take advantage of the spaces in between meetings, whether that's to take care of any next steps or prep for your next call. But don't find yourself with like 15 to 20 or half an hour extra minutes that you didn't anticipate. And now you're like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to like putz around on um, Instagram before my call or scroll through TikTok because you will get sucked into these activities that are mindless just to fill the time because you didn't expect to have it. So that's number two. Um, giving yourself too much time for meetings and calls is a productivity trap. Narrow down those times and you'll find yourself with like an, 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 at least an extra hour in your day. Okay. Number three, trying to get more done. Yes, that is a productivity trap. I know, I know getting done, getting more done is literally the definition or the goal of productivity. But when you want to cross more things off of your to-do list, what you end up doing is you are left working through um, easy tasks just to be like, boop, and then you are banging out the easy stuff and you're left with the bigger more challenging, longer scope things, you're putting them off later in the day. So you're left working through your meals. You're not taking breaks and you end up working late into the night. You know, do not take pride in the grind. There's no reason to have to grind away. There's no badge of honor. It shouldn't be hard. You should find that flow state. So Working nonstop, that will drain your energy. It'll drain your focus. It'll drain your clarity. And you're constantly spinning your wheels, and that doesn't help you produce good results. Your quality of work and your life will slowly decrease until you reach your breaking point and you burn out because you're trying to do all the things for the sake of checking it off the list. You're putting off the things that will actually move the needle in your business or the harder things because you could spend three hours working on one thing that you can cross off or you can just go through and do the easy stuff and be like, look at me, I'm so productive, right? So we don't want you to burn out. So instead, try to take breaks, give yourself time, implement short breaks throughout the day. It's going to help you recharge, refocus your energy so you stay at this like 100% optimal um, performance, right? And you still need to get outside, get fresh air, um, take a little break and read, take a walk, play with your kids, your pets, go to walk the dog, listen to a podcast because spending time away from your desk will help you regain clarity so that you are ready to think through strategies when you come back and you've got that focus and that like creative spark is back. Um, for some mindfulness, you may want to try meditating. I know it's hard, but like give yourself 10 minutes, put on a guided meditation, you know, calm headspace. So easy. There's tons of them. Um, Peloton, if you are using the Peloton app, they have meditation. Um, and just give yourself 10 minutes. And, uh, you know, you can also journal gratitude throughout the day. You can leave space in your day for like Namaste, peace, tranquility, renewal, help you stay grounded and motivated, but also try to catch yourself when you are checking things off and doing the easy stuff just for the sake of looking productive on your to-do list, okay? Do not just focus on the little stuff. So you could be like, look at me, look at me. Um, another thing you should really be doing, and I've talked about this a lot, is focusing on certain activities on certain days. So I will really only have client meetings on Tuesdays. I do Facebook Lives every Thursday. I have a meeting with my team on Mondays. And Wednesdays I do coaching and Fridays I leave open. And so all of those activities happen in the morning. And then I will do my deeper work when I'm on my computer later in the day. 
but I try not to have like a client meeting Monday and a team meeting Tuesday and like a follow-up meeting with the team on Friday and a podcast interview on Wednesday. It's just too much context shifting. And I want to know really what my day is going to be about. So think about managing your time that way as well, where you kind of have a sense of what's going to happen each day and you're planning your um, activities around that. So you're not having meetings every single day and having things that take you away from focus. It really helps. And also I focus um, the days that I have the energy, you know, where I know I'm going to be the most energized and the most focused to do the hardest things, to do the most like focus intense things. Okay. That was number three, trying to get more done for the sake of choo -choo -choo. Um, is not productive. The fourth one to be aware of is having a quick response time, firing off emails, right? So a lot of PR pros feel like they need to be accessible 24 seven. You know, they feel like if they want to be the best service provider possible for their clients, they have to be accessible. They have to reply immediately and taking care of emails really quickly gives the illusion of productivity, but it's not doing you any favors. And here's why. Um, if you're always on call for your clients, you cannot have healthy work-life boundaries. Let me say that again. If you're always on call for your clients, you get a text, you look at your phone, you've got to get back to them. You get an email, it's you know eight o'clock at night, you got to get back to them. You will not have healthy work-life boundaries. And boundaries are an essential part of staying connected in your relationships, with your family, your loved ones, your friends, with yourself, you have to have boundaries. You won't be able to fully check out of work and check into quality time with the people that matter the most to you. You know, with time with friends, family, time for yourself to just decompress or work out or go for a walk or, you know, go meet a friend for dinner. Everyone needs quality time to cultivate meaningful relationships. And that's really important in your life, meaningful relationships. I don't want you to sacrifice your relationships for the sake of getting ahead in your business. You should never have to do that. Um, the other thing is your mental state can start to seriously suffer without that time or that freedom or flexibility that having boundaries will allow you to have. You need to have flexibility, freedom. To me, that is like the number one benefit of having your own business. That's like my complete definition of success. Doing what I love lights me up, makes me really um, fulfilled, but I get to be where I want, when I want, work with who I want, take off days when I want. That flexibility and freedom is absolutely the number one um, factor for success, in my opinion. And if I didn't have healthy boundaries with clients, if I jumped every time an email came in or felt like I had to be on call 24 seven, I wouldn't have that. And I think my mental health would seriously suffer. So instead of feeling like you have to have a super quick response time, like I'm the fastest trigger finger in the West, I'm gonna email you back in four seconds. Yes, during working hours, if that's how you wanna be, that's fantastic. But Set and enforce strict boundaries with your clients so they're aware of your availability. They know, you know, when your working hours are. Make sure they know that you're not available nights and weekends. If they contact you in your off time with non-urgent matters, just reply to them at the start of the next business day. And even if you are working, because that's your choice, you want to be working to kind of get ahead or you've got to catch up on a few things in the evening, try not to reply to clients at night. You may feel like you look good. Like, look at me, it's eight o'clock and I'm still working. Like, I'm so dedicated. No, you're training them to think they can reach you at eight o'clock at night, anytime they want. So write that email and boomerang it or schedule it in, in Google Mail, Gmail, so that you can have that go out the start of business the next day. First thing in the morning, 
maybe even before you're awake. So you look like I'm an early riser, whatever you want to do, but it can be really hard. And I get it to let go of that belief that you need to be available 24 seven. You don't, I promise you, you will be much better off for it. And Getting that time back in your life so that you can connect with your loved ones, your family, make time for yourself, that's invaluable. You know, you don't have to be accessible 24-7 to do a phenomenal job. If you're getting results, you're being very responsive during your set business hours. Um, So that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you for being here and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.